So let's talk then about, let's pretend you're right. Let's say, let's say that there's some solutions. What, what would be a solution? Should we get rid of fossil fuels? You know, it, it, if we could just filter out the car, it's the carbon that's, that's doing it. So I, I don't know about well, no, getting you're, off you're, of fossil fuels, but if we could See, that's a, why I asked about your premise. The, the, amount of, the amount of certainty you have in a planet that is so massive with such unbelievable biodiversity to immediately act that we, the humans, are the only reason that global temperatures might be going up, I think is a flawed hypothesis. Because if you're wrong, then we might try to find a solution that actually might be more about private property confiscation and wealth deterioration, aka Marxism, not actually solving the problem. That's why I'm so, that's why I challenge the hypothesis, is I, what else might be contributing to it. So let's just ask some- What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back again to a new video. Today, we're going to check it out. Charlie Cook triggers climate change radical. Okay, I call him Charlie Kick, the color of kicking us. Let's go right into today's video. Hi, Mr. Kirk. I think climate change is a much more serious issue than the conservative movement gives it credit for. And so my question is, what common ground can we find regarding climate action? And how can we get more conservatives in on the movement? What can we find that we agree on? Cool. Um, I just want to make sure I understand where you're coming from. And this is not a trick question. Can you define what you mean by climate change? Primarily reducing carbon emissions and other greenhouse gases. Got it. So is your argument that rising global temperatures are tied to carbon emissions? Uh, to my understanding, the scientific consensus is quite solid on that, yes. Got it. Okay. So, again, not, not a trick question. What is carbon? It's not a trick question. Okay. It's an element. Yeah, right. And carbon it's dioxide traps heat in the atmosphere. Right. So, Got so carbon is life. Right, oh. so carbon. Right, yeah, exactly. You can't have life. I've carbon. heard this before, though, and uh, the yeah, idea that carbon is plant food is great, but the reality is, when there's 40 billion tons being emitted a year by a network of global factories and global tailpipes, that absolutely has an impact on climate. And right. I'm so disappointed that this is the reaction. Uh, well, hold on. To the question, honestly, because I don't know how you all. We're in an agricultural area. We're seeing it worse every year. I, it's getting well, hold bad, on. Let me ask a question. I don't know why conservative movement insists on resisting the scientific Well, I'm not resisting. I'm asking what carbon is, okay? So let's make sure we're clear on what I'm saying. Do you think there could be other explanations as to why global temperatures are rising? Yes. Such as? They've studied them, and it, it's not due to anything other than the emissions, is to my Okay, so not so solar flares, global tilt? Well, they've accounted for those, and they've found out that those are not the main drivers of the climate change that we're seeing. Okay, so you trust, I just want to make sure I understand, you trust consensus from scientists that put forward reports? No, I trust ExxonMobil's own scientists who found this out in the 1980s and hid the findings uh, for decades so that they wouldn't lose money. Right, so excuse me, just as a kind of side note, I'm unbelievably skeptical when I hear scientists say, but let's pretend you're right. Okay, let's pretend that climate change is an existential threat. Would that be something that you say? To our existence, to the human species, probably not. I imagine the okay. rich will always find an ark to live in while the rest well, that, of us that's, have our crops fail. You have some nuance, so that's fair. So let's talk then about, let's pretend you're right. Let's say, let's say that there's some solutions. What, what would be a solution? Should we get rid of fossil fuels? You know, it, it, if we could just filter out the, it's the carbon that's, that's doing it. So I, I don't know about well, no, getting off of fossil fuels, but if we could See, that's why a, I asked about your premise. The, the, amount of, the amount of certainty you have in a planet that is so massive with such unbelievable biodiversity to immediately act that we, the humans, are the only reason that global temperatures might be going up, I think is a flawed hypothesis. Because if you're wrong, then we might try to find a solution that actually might be more about private property confiscation and wealth deterioration, aka Marxism, not actually solving the problem. That's why I'm so, that's why I challenge the hypothesis. Is I what else might be contributing to it? So let's just ask some, you know, ask some very basic questions. So if carbon is the problem, would you support planting one trillion trees? Yes. Okay, good. We agree. So that, that wouldn't... carbon is part of the solution. I think there's a broader set of solutions than what the Democratic Party specifically has been bringing to the table. But again, this resistance by the conservatives to just so let me not ask acknowledge you, that this carbon is an issue. Why do you think, we're, why do you think we ask questions? Because we're dumb? Or why do you think? Skepticism with good reason. It's, okay, good. No, yeah. okay, but good. But at some point, when in looking for the answer, you need to acknowledge that the answer can be found, and the answer has been found. Multiple people have spent their lives and careers studying this for decades, 
Oh, it's been over 100 years ago since people were first talking about the idea that carbon was trapping heat. So this is not a new idea. Huh. Do you have any fear that the solution might be worse than the problem? What solution? Sure, some, yeah. yeah. Like, for but example, like uh, mandatory electrical vehicle, electric vehicles? Oh, no, electrical vehicles will mine the ocean to death before we get everyone an electric car. It's not a well, solution. I, well, yeah, I mean, that's also cobalt's really, really bad for the environment. Yeah, we need to go car-free and build walkable communities again, actually. Is no, that's a very bad idea. See, now, now, now we're getting somewhere, okay? Bad idea. <laughs> Cars are freedom, right? Without a vehicle, you are a captive of the government in an open-air prison, right? Hmm. And so, just look at San no, Francisco. It just means you can walk to the grocery store without needing a vehicle. Right. That's a 15-minute city model. But no, yeah. this is important, and we're I've not going to I've been studying architecture for four years. I've been studying a little bit of urbanism, urbanism too. Right. It's not taking away your freedoms, the fact that you get to go to a grocery store and a, and a library and a coffee store within a 15-minute walk, folks. Okay. That's the, the, actually independence from the automobile. But that's well, aside, let me so. Independence is being able to go where you want to go when you want to go there. That's what independence yeah. is. Yeah. But let me so just, let me, put, we're not going to find, <laughs> here's the one thing that I want to make sure, and I don't get this from you because you're coming at it from a good place. The panic over climate becomes such a priority by people that also have the solution in mind. I'm not saying it's you, right? It's, it's fair. And That's so fair. we have a built-in healthy skepticism over the last decade that we are being constantly lied to by the same amount of cabal of criminals, and, or, and at the very least, exaggerating the threat, okay? Exaggerating the threat, where we are told we must take our freedoms and liberties away. We must reconfigure our life. And I'll be very honest with you, that with all of the pressing challenges that face humanity, like the most suicidal generation in history, the most drug addicted generation in history, the most alcohol addicted generation in history, the fixation on an abstraction of rising global temperatures is an academic distraction from real material suffering that people have when the activists, not necessarily you, but the loudest activists, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Elon Omar, Bernie Sanders, they want to get rid of fossil fuels, they want to disenfranchise millions of people of work, to, of work, and they want to basically put the entire grid in an unrealistic solar, wind, and turbine type model. Mr. Kirk, you sound so much like the liberal coastal elites that you rail against because the reality is the first year that my family bought cows, 2012, we had a record-breaking drought, and hay had to be trucked in from Oklahoma or Texas. The following spring, it rained so hard and so much, it broke records, and the bridges washed out, and my mother couldn't get to work. So this is very much a real well, issue. Let me ask you, We're in, in the last 50 region. years, have there been irregular weather patterns in the 60s, 70s, or 80s? Yes. Hmm. I, I hate, I, I would just close with this. You, you could talk to any rancher or farmer here in Missouri. They're Unpredictability is part of the agrarian lifestyle. To act as yeah. if you could perfectly model it, and you, you, but here's the one thing about climate change that drives me crazy, and I'll just close with this, is that no matter what happens, it gets warmer, it's climate change, it gets colder, it's climate change, with tornado, it's climate change, it's sunny, it's climate change. It's the one thing that confirms the hypothesis regardless of the result. And so it's the perfect thing to argue for. You might be right, I don't think you are, that rising global temperatures are necessarily design, you know, tied to human activity. But every solution I hear, every solution would obliterate the American economy and destroy our ability to use our greatest asset with this fossil fuels, natural gas, liquid natural gas, and oil. Thank you so much. I got to get to the next question. Thank you. Okay, this was actually interesting to watch. Uh, I love the student's point of view. Um, there's also truth in what the student is saying, but at the same time, it's going to affect the entire world. If we have to go um, shut down industries um, that are producing oil and some other carbons, it's going to need a lot of people to be jobless, a lot of people to be jobless. And his own point of view seeing people should go carless and start having walking distance, it's, it's, it's really affects the entire world. Uh, I understand that he has massive impact by this um, climate change. It has actually affected him in some certain way. Is someone who have really studied um about climate change a lot and I respect his view. But at the same time, what he's actually pointing out for us to see is that it's going to affect every single one of us in the entire world. It's going to like create lots lots of jobs, um inconvenience. It's going to inconvenience a lot of people. Uh I, I don't feel like carbon is is the main issue we are having when it comes to climate change. I don't feel like carbon is the main issue. There are also other factors that affect climate change. So his point of view, by we taking off carbon from the equation, 
there will still be climate change. So let's, let's use the word of oil producing countries like Qatar, for instance. Now, if they have to take off um, the oil production, it's, it's going to affect the economy of the country really, really, really bad. So that's why all those greenhouse um, um, companies that are producing oils and some other resources, they tend to build their industries in a place that, that, are, that are far away from humanity, that, that are far away from people, from 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 humans, let me use the word humans from from seas. Some of them are trying to build it far away from seas. Some of them are trying to build it far away from people, so that other neighboring villages, so it's not affect them and lead to a loss of lives. So if you think about it, like it will actually affect the economy in massive massively if we are to get rid of refineries like that, industries that are producing gas or oils and stuff that have to do with carbon. So this student's point of view, I understand, that it's trying to save humanity as a whole world. We can't cut off such industries from the entire world because it's to actually affect the economy. But affecting the economy also affects increase or in poverty and lack and hunger. So if you think about it, you know that it's not only carbon that is the, that is rising the temperature and the climate change. It's not only um, carbon itself. There are also other factors that also affecting climate change. So this was actually interesting to watch. I understand Charlie Cake's point of view. I also understand the students. So guys, comment down below. Think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as you subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't know papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, you in my bed. I got scales all